So finally with the gloves. Yes. So Abhi basically what I am going to do is, so this is like the incubators hmm. for worms. When they we maintain constant temperature, this may be real worms. Okay. We have to do experiments and all. We want the temperature is not a value, right? So now what I am going to show you is worm picking. Okay. So worm picking means so basically we have to maintain worms. Okay. Well, to do experiments. So what we do is we we take them from one particular culture plate and uh, move them to another and so on. Depending upon who is doing it. So for now what I am doing is I am synchronizing a population of worms. So when we have to do an experiment, we synchronize all the worms so that age is again no longer a barrier. Okay. Because of that we get very variation in our data. Right. So uh, so that is what I am doing. So uh, I will show you that. Yes. So you can show that. So basically now what we are going to do is a simple copy paste for worms. So the idea is that I have these culture plates which are like the new culture plates, and this is my old plate which was like the maintenance plate. So now if I have to design, if I have to start an experiment, what I will do is that from the older plate I will put some of the uh, parent worms on these plates, which then would lay eggs on these. And then I will remove it. So say as a uh, population synchronizer. So idea is to give them a brief time where they would lay eggs, and that time, uh, that uh, that amount of population would nearly be synchronized. Hmm. So this is what I'm, now I'm going to do. So now you can see on the computer screen. So what I do and how we do it is through this uh, needle. So essentially, this is like a tungsten wire, and uh, I mean we use it because because it is tungsten. Tungsten, so uh, we make sterile. Currently, we just put it on a flame, and it will get red hot. And then quickly, I can remove it and uh, like pick the worms with it. I will show you. Now. So now, what I do before is I will just like, wash it a little bit. Or I put it on a flame. So you see now, it get red hot. And as soon as I remove it, it is. Like not back to normal. So by this, actually, it becomes sterile. Hmm. You now it doesn't have any any of the bacteria and all of that stuff. So, so now you can look here. Yeah. So these are like the bigger ones. Right? So you see on these, these are like the uh, pe uh, the parent uh, worms which are going to lay eggs. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is to put them on the other plates. Wait, what is the period for the egg laying and the right. hatching and all that? So, so a typical life cycle of these worms is, as I said, is around 18 18 days, and they would lay eggs around uh, when they become mature around three days after the eggs has been, I mean, very beginning of their life, and from three day onwards they start to lay eggs, and they will lay until uh, like maybe. Eleven, twelve days. Hmm. So there is a long period and in which they can lay up, but the uh, like the peak lies around three, four days. Peak as in like their peak when the uh, the rate of egg laying is maximum. Okay. So when they will lay as much as maybe around ten uh, to twelve eggs per hour, but then that would substantially decrease uh, as the age increases. That is like also, do they have like sexes or is it like? Yes. So okay. this, uh, what you are seeing is uh, hermaphrodite, but okay. they also have males in the population, which is very rare. So males are like zero point one percent of the population. Okay. So they are very very rare. Huh. And what we do when we do genetic crossing, so like older Mendelian genetics, you remember? Huh. Mendelian to do Mendelian genetics, we generate males. Huh. And there are certain strategies to do that to generate males. We generate. Okay. Males. Wow. So how we do? We basically give them heat shock. So what do? What that does is basically that uh, uh, inhibits the process of chromosome segregation. So that creates a like a uh, a heterogeneity in the chromosomes. So like in males, you have a, a heterogeneity. I mean, it's like X O and in uh, Herma it's X X. Right? Okay. So like in humans, we have X X. In females. And males are X Y, and in these it is X O. I mean, it does not has that one chromosome. Okay. So if, when we give them heat shock, so we will get some embryos. This may be uh, that one X won't come. So they will turn out to be males. Hmm. But in the wild, very small population. But if you have to cross, them, like if you have to like generate, you have two different uh, genotypes and cross it to make a new genotype, then we generate males and then males. 
बटाइट्स सो अभी के लिए आई शो यू तो लाइक अभी के लिए वट आई एम डूइंग दिस इज अ कल्चर प्लेट एंड जस्ट फोट How do you actually take and drop it? Is there some technique where like it sticks it? So it's simply like scooping them. Okay, and you just ah. push it into the gel. Exactly. Okay. So sometimes they they also die like for this one. So if you see, oh. then, either um, so now this is highly stressed. Okay. So it might end up dying. It won't survive. Okay. So that happens because. Like they are very tiny creatures, and so what to do then? So <laughs> that is why you have to take care. But then yeah. you can't avoid. Can't avoid. Anyway, they have to die at some point because during the experiment, eventually they will die. Does this creep you out? No, no. Because some people are sensitive. Now the process is done. So now I have at least four of the mothers on each plate, and then they will lay eggs until tomorrow morning. And you're gonna make lots of babies. And tomorrow morning I'll just pick them out from these, and then I will have the synchronized population and all. So essentially, the idea is that here we I have the whole pathway in my hand, so like all the different players of the pathway, I knock them down using RNAi. So RNAi is a technique by who you will be able to see later on, and you should understand. So it's a technique to deplete a selective gene. That is what I'm doing. 
each plate, each one of them have a different gene which is knocked out. And then I will see ki which one of them plays a role and how okay. much will it play. So this was there uh, earlier itself, like when you were shifting it into the new plates, ah. that was already known that unka wo knockout ho gaya. Uh, no, so, so now the idea is that basically I shifted the mothers from wild type conditions okay. to the condition where it will get depleted. Okay. The, the, the gene will get depleted. Is that the condition? How, how do you like induce it? Is it uh, through the so gene? The, uh, ki, so basically, how do you do feed on bacteria? Haan. Right. So what we do is we modify the bacteria. Hmm. So, so there is a thing. So bacteria basically has a but it has a plasmid vector, ah. right? With which which is essentially like a DNA element in the bacteria, hmm. which helps bacteria survive, hmm. right? But now, thanks to advancements in molecular biology and genetics and all of it, what people have done is we have we actually had that system, had the original system of bacteria, and cloned. We kind of put in our things of interest over there. So now that bacteria, which was using that plasmid for its own benefit, actually now uses it to uh, fulfill our purpose. Hmm. So that is what we have done. We modify that bacteria, that wild, wild normal wild type bacteria, into something which can essentially do a thing for us. And then we feed that bacteria to these worms. So what okay. happens is when these worms eat that bacteria, they will like whatever gene we feed it whatever like so it's called RNAi this thing which I'm doing it's RNA silencing mm. so essentially it will just degrade the RNA so that so that will lead a lead to not production of production genetic information can be switched off so during development a cell only reads instructions that are necessary for gaining the characteristic structures and functions uh, so basically the central dogma of biology DNA RNA protein I mean Sorry. DNA would transcribe uh, transcribe to RNA, RNA will translate to protein. protein. So basically what we do is we remove the middle layer, RNA. RNA. So if you remove it, there would be no proteins. That would be finished. So essentially that function of that particular gene would be perfect. So that is something. So that is what we do through this. Mm, yeah. So it's a very simple protocol, honestly. And, uh, but it does wonders. By this you can uh, screen for function of genes and you can find out so like this, this actually is an example, the person who did this uh, maybe around, I think, 20 years ago, uh, the, the first paper in this field. In so what they did was to DAF, uh, so they knocked out one of this gene, DAF, and with that they showed that the, you can increase lifetime as much as four times. Hmm. So essentially that just one gene knocked out, you can increase the lifespan four folds. So like for example, if humans may that translate successfully, what that would mean is you can live to maybe 400 years or more. Or hmm. more. So that is the idea when it comes to. So, yeah. But these are like the kind of experiments where where it starts. Cool. So I have now put them back in their incubation. Ha, in, in their housings, in their incubation chunk, and then leave it for tomorrow. Cool, they go to sleep. I mean, they won't really sleep, but. <laughs>